Today, we're taking a look at the time-lapse workflow using After Effects. Adorama TV presents DSLR Video Skills, where you'll learn all about photography and videography. Here's your host, Rich Harrington. Hi, my name is Rich Harrington, and you're watching DSLR Video Skills, brought to you by Adorama. Today, we're taking a look at the time-lapse workflow using After Effects. Now, on earlier episodes, we covered the techniques of shooting time-lapse, what gear you needed, how to develop the files using Photoshop and Bridge. What I want to show you now is the most professional way to assemble those, and that is using Adobe After Effects. I'm going to go ahead and bring in those images. So, I'll just choose File, Browse in Bridge. And this lets me browse to the shots that I want to use, and I can now navigate. And I know that earlier I processed a bunch of raw files to TIFF. Here they are. I'll just select those, and I'm going to import. Now, when I import, I need to decide how I want these to come in. Notice here, if I go ahead and just double click, the one file comes in. If I select all the images, and I double click, all the files come in. This is problematic. You don't want all these files to be independent. Rather, you want After Effects to see them as an image sequence. So instead of browsing, you're going to need to import. Here's how that works. Let's just select those and delete. And I'll double click in the project window. And I'm just going to navigate to the image I want. Now fortunately it found it because that's where Bridge was last looking. So I'll select the first image. I'll tell it that this is an image sequence by leaving the box checked at the bottom down there, and I'll choose Open. And it loaded that quickly. Unlike other applications like Photoshop or a video editing tool that has to load each frame, After Effects simply references the frames. So it points it to the location on the hard drive. So it's a very fast import. So I can now bring this in to a sequence and start to work with it without having to actually load all the details at once. This image is very big. It's got the image sequence. I'm going to choose File, Interpret Footage, Main. And this is where I can assign a frame rate. So in this case, I'm going to use 23.976, which is the frame rate for 24p video. And I'll click OK. And it's going to create and adjust the timing of that. So right now, it's about an 11 second shot. I'm going to drag that into a new composition, which is essentially a sequence. And I'll just set this to one view. And now let's adjust the size under composition settings. You'll see that we have useful presets. So for example, I could size this to 1080p. Using the 24 frames, there it is. I'll assign the correct 23976 frame rate. And I'm going to make this a little bit longer so I've got some room to retime things. Let's go for 25 seconds. All right, I've done that, it's great, and you're saying, where did the rest of my picture go? Some of you are wondering, where did the pixels go? They're still there. All we did was change the canvas size. We didn't crop the image, all those details are there. I shot this on a Nikon D800. Use whatever camera you have. The idea here is that I had a lot of megapixels, more than I need for digital video. So now I simply resize the photo and adjust its composition so it's properly cropped for video. Here we are. Let's twirl this triangle down and you'll see transform and I could adjust scale. So if I want to see everything, I could adjust it so I see everything. And you see as we drag through, it's going to start to load those frames in. Now this is a shot that started off and I made a few adjustments near the beginning here. So I'm just going to lop off the front part of that shot with a little bit of trimming. That looks to be really the first good part of the sky that I want to use. And then going forward, it starts to go and transition to later at night. I like that. It's working really well. Now, what I want to do is make a few additional tweaks. I can actually stretch this. So if I go to 200%, you'll see that I now have a 20 second time lapse. Let's press O to jump to the out point of that layer. That looks pretty good. And I'll just adjust my composition settings now so that it matches the current time. 2019. Great. 
let's press play. In this case, it's called RAM preview. And I'll set that to a lower quality, like quarter, for this initial preview so it loads very quickly. There we go. After Effects has to cache the frames into RAM. Now, for those of you who are saying, why can't you just press play? This is not a video file. These are very, very high resolution stills that you're sequencing into a video file. So by using this option to RAM preview, we can go ahead and load it into RAM, and once it caches, it'll play back smoothly. The faster your computer, the more RAM you have, the easier this is, but this is just part of the process. Make a nice cup of tea. Enjoy yourself for a moment. Look at your photography. Read a magazine. It's going to take a little bit of time, but it's not bad. And it's going to then play back in real time so you get that preview. All right, the first three seconds are loaded. I could take a good look here. Let's press play. And I like my shot. It's working well for me. If I want to preview a different area, I could just move the playhead, hit B for beginning, and then N for end. And when I preview that, it's going to load. And you'll see the green progress bar indicating what's happening. Now, this might seem a little bit slow, and that's because it's currently running as a single processor. The computer I'm using is a multi-processor computer. Most computers these days are. If you've got two to three gigs of RAM per processor, you can easily take advantage of multiprocessing in After Effects by just modifying a simple preference. Let's go under the Preferences menu here, and I'll go to Memory and Multiprocessing, and I'm going to turn it on. Looks great here, and I've got 16 gigs of RAM in this machine. There we go. I've told it to actually just use one gig for each of those processors. It's got it properly mapped. That looks good. Premiere is currently using some memory. If I want, I could switch over to Premiere and free that up. I'll just quit the application. Switch on over to After Effects. And we'll just revisit that preference. There we go. And we have more RAM free now. So it tells me that all eight CPUs are going to be used. That's great. I'm going to go ahead and switch that over to one and a half gigs. It's still going to use seven of the CPUs, so that should be a better match. Let's click this here and watch. You're going to notice that in a second, it's going to start multiprocessing. And now, look at how quickly it's previewing. I always find this funny. People never take the time to actually get to learn their software. They just jump in and start to create. This preference has been there for a long time, and if you've never turned it on, you're running your computer like it was built in the early 90s. This is going to dramatically speed up After Effects. I'm going to go ahead and smooth that out with a little bit of frame blending. Looks good. And let's toss on an adjustment layer. And I'm going to use a stabilizer. There's my color stabilizer. Drop that on. And this makes it easy. I'll say, this should be black. That sign should be white. And it will go ahead and stabilize the shot. Now, if it's a little bit off, you can go ahead and tweak it. Looks pretty good there. I'm just going to adjust the brightness. And that'll stabilize the values. Now, as you move that around, you'll see it starts to adjust. I'll drag that black point into a nice dark shadow. Looks good. Maybe we'll try over here. That's pretty good. And that'll help. Let's go ahead and make a new solid. Get a nice dark rich shadow. Grab my elliptical marquee and double click. Twirl down the properties here. We'll just invert that. Feather it out, get a nice soft edge, and we can change that to multiply mode and adjust its opacity so we get a nice vignette effect at our edges. And there it is. Now I click preview, it's going to take just a second, and then it's going to initialize the background and it'll start to process that with all the processors and build the RAM preview. So, pretty straightforward there with After Effects. I pre-processed the images using Adobe Bridge. 
If you really are on a fast machine, you actually don't even have to do that. You could bring the raw files right into After Effects. But it does add a bit of a time to your preview and renders, so it's really a decision. Let's take a look at one more shot. We'll import that in as raw native, and I'll show you what After Effects can do with those files. All right, here's my shot that I processed. That's looking pretty good. Highly recommend you check out the plugin GBD Flicker if you want to remove some of that flicker that's sometimes inherent in the sky. But that's looking pretty good there. It was a sunset, so we had some changes. I'm going to now import the raw file. So I'll just double click. We're going to navigate out to a raw image sequence. There we go. Let's import that in as a camera raw sequence. Click OK. And it brings up the camera raw dialog box. Click OK. It'll finish importing. And there's the raw image sequence. Drag that into a composition. It's going to load. Same idea. Change its size. Match what you need for video. And then you can adjust the size. In fact, you can even adjust the scale over time. So you can start zoomed in, adjust the anchor point and position, or anchor point and scale would be best. There we go. I'm going to start right there. And then at the end of the shot, I'm going to adjust the scale to pull back out and adjust the anchor point a bit. Looks good. Let's go ahead and preview that. And because this is raw, it's going to take a bit longer to load, but this allowed me the flexibility. If I need to, I just double click on the raw file and it will allow me to reprocess the raw image using Adobe Camera Raw. So we'll go ahead and render those files out. It takes a little bit to process, good time lapse does, but the fact of getting it out of After Effects really isn't that hard. I'm going to show you how to add these to the render queue and generate new movies, and then you could bring those into your favorite video editing tool or even post them directly to the web right out of that file. All right, the raw file's been processing here. See that's working pretty well. It's just a quick preview, but it's looking good because it pulls out. Let me go ahead and add these both to render. I'll just select the two comps and choose composition. Add to render queue. This is where you process the files. You then can choose a quality setting. I'm going to go with best here. And then choose your output module. Now there's lots of options. I'm just going to go with an H.264 here for the web. Give the file a name and tell it where you want it to render. Same thing here. Save your work and click render and then walk away for a while as it processes. So there you have the advanced After Effects workflow. Opens up all sorts of options including the ability to pan and scan around your time lapse photos giving sort of the Ken Burns effect as well as the option to work with processed or even raw files. Those raw files are pretty beefy though, so make sure your system has enough RAM and a fast processor. For DSLR video skills, my name's Rich Harrington. Be sure to head on over to the Adorama Learning Center where there's tons of articles about time lapse and the gear you need, as well as links to some of the other videos we've produced about time lapse photography. Adorama TV is brought to you by Adorama, your best source for the equipment and knowledge you need. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. Place your order by 7 p.m. and it ships the same day. Plus, the next time you're in New York City, be sure to visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue. Check out the Adorama Rental Company for professional cameras, lighting, computers, and more. We'll help you make the best selection to match your needs while giving you the knowledge to achieve the best outcome from your rental. Adorama is your complete solution for equipment, printing, training, and more. Adorama, more than a camera store.